Hey everybody, I'm Lori Hernandez and this is One Creative Mind. Her style is bold and her sound is beautiful and her work, it might be best described as inspirational. Singer, songwriter and advocate of the arts, Bossy joins us today to share her story, her artistry and a very, very special song. So Bossy, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, and, you know, the, the feeling is very mutual, super inspired by everything you do and everything you are doing with One Creative Mind and also your work as an athlete. Uh, really, really an honor to be here and chatting with you today. Thank you. Cheers. Same here. I'm so excited to hear what you have to say today and to, to listen to you. Um, viewers, feel free to post questions or comments in the chat section at any time. And if you know anyone who can benefit from the information in today's webcast, uh, please share this video with them. So, Bossy, let's talk about your most recent album, Run With Lions. It's a great place to start because it's your story and each song is a chapter. So can you share a little bit about your own history and your experiences um, and how they're reflected in the concept of Run With Lions? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this was really my comeback EP. <laughs> uh, my career started in music and then I left for a number of years and built a career doing something completely different. And uh, I am a two-time breast cancer survivor, and uh, and this you know this EP really reflects my journey of coming back to my artistry and surviving uh, cancer twice. Mm. And and you know you're right, every song is is a chapter in my story, and uh, particularly in the story of becoming bossy, um, mm -hmm. because you know truly my name is is reflective of everything that I. I hope to put into the world and in really starting a movement of bossy people and bossy women, uh, folks who are willing to, to stand up and use their voice for the things that they believe in most. And uh, so the EP, you know, one of the songs on the EP is called Waterfall. It's a love song. And that's really where this chapter, you know, start. It's chapter one because um, my husband's last name is Bossy. <laughs> So my married last name is Bossy, and it could not be uh, more appropriate. So I have to thank him every day for coming with this incredible last name. Um, and, and then there's also the song Run With Lions, which is the title of the EP. And that is chapter two. That's really the moment of struggle, facing your greatest adversity and having to summon the inner courage and the inner strength to rise above it, both mentally and physically. Uh, and then there's the song Rule the World, which I really consider chapter three. And that song I'll, I'll perform later today. And this is that moment coming out of that really intense struggle and kind of dealing with the aftermath, looking back and, and knowing you've survived something very difficult, but also it's that moment of having to re-enter life, right? Which is mm -hmm. oftentimes one of the hardest where you know, you, you're sort of dealing with the trauma of what happened, but also knowing that it's time to start living again and, and really making a conscious decision about how you want to rebuild your life. Uh, and then chapter four and five, honey and talking to you, that's about building a better world. And, and so, you know, for me, it was really wanting to strengthen my inner voice, but then be able to point it in the direction of things that I care most about uh, and, and really doing something to positively benefit the world. Uh, and so, you know, that is that is really my story. Uh, and in that story of survival, was also the realization that one of the things that I care most about is art and artists. Mm -hmm. And it was time for me to reclaim that part of myself and to be more fearless in my life and, and really re-entering um, my journey as an artist and, and putting more art into the world. Yeah, I mean, I just wanna highlight something you just said about like coming back into the world. There's this, there's this comfort in the hide, the cave, the home, you know, whether that be your own body or a place like there's this, uh, like, it's a resting place and to have to come out of that can be so scary. But there's so much yeah. color and freedom when you step out. And it's wonderful that you mentioned that I I love yeah. that. And, and I, you know, and I, I imagine, you know, something about this as well, you know, having been through an injury yourself and having to sort of recalibrate your life, um, you know, being an Olympic gymnast and, uh, and then having to sort of think about, okay, how do I, um, 
you know, how do I reposition myself and my life mm -hmm. after rebuilding myself after an injury, but also recognizing that, you know, my life might look a little bit different now. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's always the question of like, can I get back to where I was? And then the hope of, can I even be better? You know, and it, yeah. the curiosity you only find out if you step out of like, I call it the hide, but you know yep. what I mean? Yeah, um, absolutely. So that's very interesting that you mentioned that. Um, we we know music and art can help lessen the severity of mental health issues, um, reducing stress, easing depression and anxiety, lifting moods overall. Yet despite the overwhelming therapeutic qualities, it's quite common for artists and musicians to experience mental and emotional health struggles. Why do you think that is? So many reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I could talk about this subject all day long. <laughs> uh, you're, you're right. I mean, you know, artistry is is such a gift. Uh, having an outlet for um, all of the emotions and the thoughts that need processing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And and in many ways, art for me has been a way of making sense of even the things that I may be thinking or feeling and haven't necessarily brought into my consciousness yet. You know, so many things sort of come out of my subconscious when I write a song and, and you know, after I've written it, I, I realize, oh my gosh, you know, I don't even know if I realized that's how I was feeling. Um, so you're right, it can be very therapeutic. But interestingly, when I came back to my artist career as a musician, um, I started experiencing mental health challenges myself. And I, I just find that so interesting because I knew that this was the path for me, you know, and I, um, yet despite all of that, you know, there was still a lot of, you know, challenges that I, I started facing when I decided to, to take this step. Um, and for me, that is, you know, anxiety and, and having panic attacks, which mm -hmm. is, was totally new for me, totally out of the blue, had never experienced this before. I was always someone that people thought were, you know, uh, was more of a kind of relaxed person. Uh, and I think it's because it's it's very difficult, you know, to be an artist. There is there's a lack of structure in your day to day, mm -hmm. uh, which can be a cause for you know anxiety and depression. There's also a tremendous amount of instability. You know, it isn't like it's something where step by step you sort of know where you're going. It's difficult to track progress uh, because it's something that isn't necessarily linear, and especially especially, you know, post pandemic, it has become oftentimes a very isolating path because so much of what we do, you know, we do on our own. We're, we're sort of diving into our nether, you know, regions of our soul to pour it out into, you know, music or art or um, writing, you know, whatever that artistic expression is. And so it's very vulnerable. Um, and so many of the opportunities, you know, for me as an artist, pre pandemic, you know, it was, of course, very isolating at times, but at least we had those moments like where you go to the studio, you're mm -hmm. in rehearsals with bands, you're, you know, you're doing things from time to time in a group. And that has become less and less since the pandemic. Uh, and so much of the recording process happens, you know, in pieces and then it's like assembled, you know via <laughs> online channels, you know? Um, so it, it's become even harder for artists uh, to really be able to thrive because, you know, we're just, we're isolated, vulnerable, um, and there's just a, a tremendous lack of structure um, and, uh, you know, and certainty. Yeah, I, I didn't even think of that perspective of like, a huge part of art is community like it seems so obvious but like the this idea that especially for for musicians to go into the studio and not just associate it with concerts or performance but to do you know to create together with people of course it starts with yeah. you but to create together with people and how that could be stripped from the pandemic that's terrifying totally. like that's what do I mean, you do for that? Absolutely. And you think about visual artists, you know, so much of that you're painting in your studio mm -hmm. uh, by yourself, writers, you know, you're people, novelists. My God, you're like writing in a room for years by yourself. Yeah. You know, it's extremely isolating. Uh, you don't have, you know, as someone who's who's both been an artist and spent time in the corporate world, 
you know, when you're working for a company, you go into an office, there are people that you see mm -hmm. every single day, you have checkpoints, you have validation for your work every single day, you have a paycheck yeah. every single Friday. So there's the sense of, of momentum and, and all of that is, is of course, you know, not, uh, not there for artists. So yeah. uh, it's hard, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna shift gears a little bit. Um, I know you have a strong commitment to social impact. So as part of your arts advocacy, um, in 2021, you founded a community support space for artists, House of Bossy. That is such a cool name. Tell us what you're aiming to do with House of Bossy. What's your mission? Um, so really, you know, with House of Bossy, it is to support the arts and artists. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I really believe that the arts are at the forefront of cultural evolution. And so the more art that gets made, the better we are. And so uh, there's a lot of ways that I, I like to participate, um, you know, in initiatives that better our world. And mental health is certainly one of the, the hugest things that um, I am an advocate for. Uh, but I, I really believe that the arts have a, a special place in, uh, in creating a better world. And so supporting artists is really, you know, where, uh, where we operate. And we do that in a number of ways. Uh, we do all sorts of community events, you know, brunches, dinners, we do concert series where we showcase musicians, uh, poets, uh, we're even working on staging a play. Um, we do Ooh. artist residency programs where we select an artist and we literally tailor a boot camp around their needs and their goals. Um, I don't know if I specifically answered your question, but it's really about mm -hmm. giving um, giving people a space to come together and to create. Uh, and also, you know, we, we really look for artists that we can help support and sort of, you know, incubate in a way their initial ideas um, and, you know, hopefully start to, to give them a bit of a platform uh, for sharing their work. And I, I really consider, you know, um, what you do too, gymnasts uh, and athletes athletes are, are artists too. Um, and Thank especially, you. you know, gymnasts, it's like, it, it's such a beautiful combination of uh, athletic ability, but also artistic expression. Uh, and you. so you're really straddling a, a beautiful and, and unique, um, a, a unique world. So yeah, it's definitely an interesting, we, there's an entire book called The Code of Points that tells us what perfection looks like, what angles we have to hit, what everything needs to acquire by and then there's like this tiny bit of breathing and that we get to either choose our floor music or we get to choreograph our own mm -hmm. routines and they don't have to look the same and like where we can find those pocket pockets yeah. of artistry they you know we try to explode with that because that's all we get yeah so it's it's really fun that you mentioned that and i'm also i'm at nyu for drama so every time you oh, mention really? anything having to do with the arts i'm like yeah <laughs> Amazing. I love that. I actually went to theater school and uh, when I went to college, I studied theater and, you know, music has always been a part of my life, but yeah, you know, that's what I studied in school too. And it's, it's so fun. I'm so thrilled. It's so fun. Are you loving it? I am loving it. You know, I, I had to be a roll of scotch tape yesterday and it was quite a new experience <laughs> for me, but it's like, if you can do that, then you can play someone in the 1800s. You can play someone in the 3000s. You can, yeah. you can completely believe all of that if you can believe you're something like that so yeah it's silly but like it's like saying, I, I also like I play music for fun I'm not but I also Ooh. feel that way like yeah you know there's there's a, a door that opens when you stop seeing stupid things as stupid That's totally I mean, so, I mean I think yeah. I, I tell people all the time like on the way to a great song is a really crappy song that you wrote, <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know? And unless you have the courage to write the really crappy song, you will never get never get the, to good the song. genius. Exactly, yeah. like, it, you know, being an artist is so much about, you know, having the courage to, to go through that process and be willing to write something that you're like, this really sucks, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. But that's yeah. okay, that's all right. You know, I, I, I know that I have the great song in me, so. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that we, we chatted about that. Um, yeah. Also, making a little left turn, I know uh, each October we mark World Mental Health Day, a chance to educate people about mental health and reduce stigma all over the globe. Uh, during the pandemic, you were tapped by the United Nations to produce, co-write, and perform an original anthem for their World Mental Health Day campaign. What was that experience like? That's crazy. 
Um, it was amazing. Honestly, it was a really, really cool project. Um, and, uh, and just to, I, I was one of the executive producers, co-writers and performers, but the producer of the track was this incredible woman named Allie Stone. Uh, and, um, it was just, you know, we worked, we had an artist in Nigeria, Dominican Republic, of course, artists here in the U S. Um, so it was this amazing conglomeration of talent from all over the world who came together uh, to create this song in six weeks. Uh, Ali and I were tasked with, you know, putting this together. And, uh, and it was, you know, it was a harrowing process during the pandemic uh, to, to pull all of this together. But, um, but it, it was incredible. You know, we all really believed in, um, in the mission, obviously, and mm -hmm. in destigmatizing mental health and the whole song, you know, it's called Move Together. And, uh, and it's really about, you know, coming together. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, togetherness and community is, is um, you know, supporting one another is, is really how we can start to, to make a difference. Uh, and, and there was a TikTok dance challenge that went along with it. We had everyone from Demi Lovato, Marshmallow was doing the, um, the TikTok dance. And uh, so it was, it was really great. And obviously uh, going to a great cause uh, and the organization United for Global Mental Health uh, does a lot of work behind the scenes with governments uh, around the world, getting them to actually invest in mental health resources in their countries. So uh, it was a huge initiative, not just, you know, obviously the artistry, but there was a lot going on behind the scenes as well. Um, and so it was, uh, it was really an honor to be a part of that. We are so excited. You are going to perform a song for us today. It's from Run With The Lions and it's about transformation following adversity, right? Tell yeah. us, I know you mentioned a little bit earlier, but tell us the story behind Rule The World. Yeah, Rule The World uh, was the moment in my life, you know, where I'd come out of my second battle with cancer. <clears throat> and this was actually one of the first songs I wrote uh, coming out of that time. Uh, and it's a really intimate song. Actually, when you hear it on the record, it's, it's like very upbeat uh, and has sort of this carefree nature about it um, because in a way, you know, it was, I, I had sort of processed all of these feelings, but, you know, it's about that moment where you, you just sort of fall into your mother's lap um, mm -hmm. and, and realize that, you know, maybe I have some regrets in my life. You know, maybe there are things that um, I wish I had done differently. And so it's processing this, like, you know, could I, if I had, been braver sooner? Could I have, you know, really achieved everything that I, I wanted? Um, was I afraid to really live? But then there's this moment uh, in the bridge where it's this recognition that, you know, God, I, you know, I'm still alive. Like every day is a new opportunity to change the course of my life and to, um, to do everything I ever dreamed of doing. Um, and, and so, you know, this is, this is really a song about returning to my artistry, uh, and, you know, and really recommitting to that, uh, and realizing that while I was happy, you know, I, I truly, I, I feel like I look back on my life and, you know, there's been so much joy and I, I'm so happy for all of the experiences I had and all of the choices that I made. But when I was sitting across from that doctor and I heard the words, you have cancer, I remember thinking, I haven't made enough art. I, I'm not ready to go yet. And I haven't done enough to make the world a better place. And so that was really, you know, that's really what the song is about. Um, it's about deciding to start ruling my world and, and being braver, being bossier. Uh, and really just, you know, taking life by the horns. <laughs> wow. Wow, that is amazing. Um, would you like to play Rule the World for us yeah. now? Yeah. Do the little acoustic version. <clears throat> Mama, I could use 
of fate nearly broke me I fell right on my knees But I saw light in the distance The shimmer of a dream Maybe if I'd lived a little sooner I could have skipped the pain Maybe if I'd worked a little harder I'd be making it rain And I could have ruled the world by now I could have ruled the world I could have ruled the world by now I could have ruled the world, yeah boop, 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 boop. When I was just a girl Mama, I had a strength around the world And I threw down the gauntlet I knew who I wanted to be Funny, it took something dark to make me see. Maybe if I died a little sooner, I could have skipped the pain. Maybe if I'd worked a little harder, I'd be making it rain. And I could have ruled the world by now. I could have ruled the world. I could have ruled. intro stuck in my head for the whole week <laughs> it's oh, my morning that's... mantra you know I just wake up every day i'm gonna rule the world today <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful thank you so much for sharing your art with us that was of fantastic course. of course thank you so much for having me today it's such a pleasure to be here it's such a pleasure to talk about artists and mental health and uh and supporting uh mental health in the artist community Bossy, thank you so much for sharing your artistry and your optimism with us today it was a delight chatting with you and viewers thank you too in addition to all that amazing music out there there are thousands of apps on the market that might provide mental health um help right in the palm of your hand so to learn about one of the many options, I spoke earlier with Steven Schuler from our CyberGuide team here at One Mind. Hey there, joining me now is Dr. Steven Schuler, the executive director of One Mind CyberGuide. Steven, there are so many mental health apps on the market, thousands. Thanks for being here to give us some information and guidance about one of them today, Dalio. Happy to chat. So what is mood tracking? So mood tracking refers to paying attention to how you feel over time to be able to gain some insights into um, what are patterns in your mood and what might be triggers that move you in positive or negative directions. What kind of boosts your mood um, or what gets you down at different times. How might mood tracking be helpful for people seeking to improve their mental well-being? 
Well, I think one way that mood tracking is useful is it helps you determine of whether what you're doing is actually working. I say all the time that if it's not measured, it doesn't matter. And so if you're not paying attention to how you're feeling over time, it's hard to really understand if you're getting better. It can also help you, as I said earlier, really identify different triggers that might either push your mood up or down. Paleo allows you to track activities and what you did as well as mood. How does this work? So you can add a tag of something that you did when you're feeling a specific mood, you know, maybe a workout that you had or spending some time with a friend. And then over time, you can reflect and see what were the things that kind of moved you in a positive direction. So you might see that, you know, every day that you work out, your mood tends to be higher on those days or spending time with a friend actually really boosted your mood and was the highlight of your week. So it helps you find those different things that you might be able to sprinkle more into your life or the things that unfortunately you have to take more out of your life to be able to be in your best mental space. Can you even add notes and photos? You can, and I think the photos is really cool because it, it's an opportunity to really capture sometimes those things that went really well. You can also, although this is a mood tracking app, think about allowing it to track or journal other things like gratitude or positive things that go on in your life. So um, it's a very flexible app, even though it's focused on mood tracking. I love that. With all apps and specifically Dalio, what are some of the benefits of being able to see trends and progress over time? I think it can be really heartening to, for people to see that they're moving in a positive direction. And this is something we've heard talking to users of mood tracking apps generally in Dalio specifically is that the positive benefits and the, the positive um, trends are really motivational for them to keep going on things. It's really beneficial to see gains, to keep on the track that we're on. And so Dalio can help facilitate that in our lives. Anything else that you would like viewers to know about Dalio? I'll say Dalio is one of um, the favorite apps of our team. It allows you to really customize uh, the app so you can go in and change the words, the emojis or the icons that you use to represent your mood. So, you know, it might start out as saying that your mood is good, but you can change it into super or fantastic, or whatever words you use to really capture and describe how you feel. And we find that having it personalized is one way to get a lot of real benefits out of using an app like this. Finally, what's the cost? So Dalio has a free version um, and it gives access to the core features like mood tracking. Um, you can get a premium version that has more features like unlimited moods, infinite reminders, advanced statistics, ability to export the data. Um, and that premium version is a monthly fee of $2.99 or an annual fee of $23.99. But we really find a lot of the benefits of the app can really be used with that free version. The CyberGuide website is a great online resource to find out all about the many mental health apps on the market. How do you rate each app? What is the criteria? So we use three criteria to evaluate apps because we don't think that there's one app that works for everyone and there's no one metric to determine what the best app is. So we look at credibility, uh, the evidence supporting an app. We look at user experience. Is it easy to learn, easy to use? And we look at transparency around data security and privacy practices. Do they share the information about what happens to your data when it enters into that app? And Dalio scores fairly well on these metrics for us. It gets a 3.67 out of five on our credibility, a 4.14 out of five on user experience, and is questionable on the uh, data security and privacy practices because it needs some more information about what happens with that app, uh, the data when it's shared in that application. Thank you so much, Stephen, for sharing. And viewers, thank you too. For more details and information, visit onemindcyberguide.org. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. I'm living my best.